All right. At this point, we have a special announcement by the Honorable Harjit uh, S. Sanjin, Canadian Minister of International Development in the Pacific Canada Development Agency. Following the announcement, the, in, the minister will be available to members of the media. So please uh, uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Sanjin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Um, I literally just got off a flight uh, this morning from, from Ottawa, and it's, I'm always excited to be back home. And, and uh, to come here to speak, it makes it even more, uh, even worthwhile. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge the National uh, Chief as well for her uh, remarks. I got to hear them while I was on, on backstage. And it's also, uh, it's very fitting to be here today on the first day of the National Indigenous uh, History Month, where we honor the stories and achievements and resilience of Indigenous peoples. Now, it is said that success is best when it is shared. Now, over the past year and a half, as Minister responsible for Pacific Can, I've had the opportunity to travel across the province and have conversations with British Columbians who have shared their stories of success. Now, success of business are now weathering the pandemic uh, and how they have emerged stronger. Success of communities coming together and investing in the future. And success of innovators taking wise risks that are now paying off. It is inspiring to see how many of these positive stories are due to the strong collaboration between Indigenous communities and partners. And last summer is just one example when I visited the Malahat uh, um, uh, Skywalk, which is operated by the Malahat Nation. Now, this stunning 10-story uh, spiral tower was a short drive from Vancouver. It has 360-degree uh, uh, views, those of you who've been there. Uh, it has fords, it's forests, mountains, and let's not forget the slide at the end as well. Uh, it is an incredible experience that shows off the beauty of our province and it is uh, bringing visitors to the region. It just goes to show when you put a vision together, you know, what can be accomplished. And I was able to enjoy the skywalk with the local leadership. I heard their journey to develop such an amazing project and how their ideas and what their next steps are as well. I also had the opportunity to visit, uh, visit Prince Rupert last summer. Now for the op opening and the, uh, the new connector road. Uh, that routes uh, the port uh, traffic away from the uh, Prince Rupert uh, uh, communities. The connector road itself was constructed by Coast uh, Shimshian uh, Northern uh, Contractors Alliance, a First Nations joint venture and with investments from the Government of Canada through Transport Canada. It was inspiring to hear, um, uh, to be there with all uh, as we kind of drove through the, the new road and to see how this project is benefiting the local community and, and how it's helping to grow the economy. Now these are just uh, two of the many examples I have witnessed firsthand of the power of partnerships to generate economic growth and prosperity for Indigenous peoples. Now great things are happening in our province and, at, um, and a great many of them are due to the ingenuity and hard work of the people in this room and I want to commend you for that. People coming together with shared objective of a more prosperous future for our families and our communities. Now, your work is truly inspiring, and I want to thank you for that. And as Minister Responsible of Pacific Can, I'm committed to working with Indigenous communities, businesses, and other partners to create enduring prosperity for our beautiful province of British Columbia. Now, that is why today I'm here to announce over $5.9 million in support to two organizations who are leading the way in how to work together to build a strong future. Now, this investment shows the Government of Canada's commitment to working with Indigenous peoples to help um, them take advantage of the opportunities in the economy of the future, including the clean energy transition and the digital revolution. There's a massive opportunity in helping communities generate clean energy and reduce reliance on fossil fuels. And together, we have already done a lot to seize this opportunity. Just beginning in 2016, Pacific and Indigenous community leaders like Judith Sayre, Miles Richardson, the New Relationship Trust, Pacific and the province of BC and the Indigenous Services of Canada came together. We laid the groundwork for the British Columbia Indigenous Clean Energy Initiative, or BCIC, uh, EI as it's known. 
And that early work has paid great dividends for the communities who are now building their own clean energy futures. Administered by the New Relationship Trust, the BCICEI supports the development of clean energy projects in First Nations community throughout British Columbia. BCIC uh, EI supports uh, is designed so that local ownership, revenue, revenue generation, employment, and business development benefits are built into the project development uh, process. Now, funded by Pacific Can through the federal government's uh, strategic partnership initiative, with contributions from the province of British Columbia uh, through the Clean BC Plan. BCICEI has delivered $26 million to support over 100 clean energy projects in First Nations in BC since 2016. Now this support has also created nearly 1,400 jobs and reduced enough CO2 emissions to take the equivalent of 128,000 cars off the road for a year. And that's a huge achievement. The project um, funded by this initiative have also generated enough clean energy to power over 3,600 homes. Now, with its focus on local energy opportunities, community capacity, revenue generation, and effective partnership, it is no surprise that BCIC EI is recognized as a leading model for Indigenous clean energy projects. This success is why I'm announcing an additional $3.9 million investment in BCIC EI. Now, $2.3 million of this is coming from Pacific Ant, and $1.6 million is coming from Indigenous Services Canada Strategic Partnership Initiative. This funding is supporting an additional 14 projects in communities across BC. Now, we already have successful examples to point to, such as the uh, Chilcotin Solar Farm, BC's largest solar farm, and the only solar farm with 100%, which is 100% owned and operated by First Nations. And the uh, Soloto of First Nations, uh, Sukwanka Wind Project is another such example. The four, uh, this four turbine, 15 megawatt wind uh, farm uh, near Chetwin will lower energy bills for the community. Each BCIC uh, EI project advances innovation, indigenous solutions to local energy needs while increasing economic prosperity for the local community. And one of the reasons we need more green energy is to power our businesses because businesses um, are in, um, increasingly more digital. The digital economy is going rapidly, and so is the opportunity for Indigenous peoples to join this growth. And that is why today I'm also announcing an investment of $2 million in Pacific and support for the First Nation Technology Council Digital Horizons Program. And this program will train over 700 Indigenous peoples with the skills required to be hired for in-demand jobs or to launch their own businesses. And this is what excites me the most. We're investing in talent. And, and graduates from this program could work in BC's tech uh, and tech-enabled economy to bring these skills to their communities. The First Nation Technology Council has a proven track record of supporting Indigenous peoples in launching a digital career. Now, since 2017, they have trained 787 Indigenous peoples for careers in the digital economy. Economic prosperity works best when it is aligned with shared values and goals. It works best when uh, more of us have opportunities to participate uh, and find meaningful work and provide for our families. So I look forward to seeing the positive impact of the future graduates of this program that they'll have on our communities. Achieving a more inclusive economy is one of my top goals as a minister responsible for Pacific Can. And the Government of Canada will continue to work in partnership with Indigenous peoples, businesses and other partners to create concrete and lasting economic benefits in communities across British Columbia. So congr congratulations to all the organizations receiving funding today. But what I'm really more excited about is looking at the success this funding is going to create in the, in, in the people skills. The, not just the jobs, but the economic opportunities with the business growth. And when they become successful, they're going to now pass that on to others. It's going to create a ripple effect of talent like you wouldn't believe. So I'm looking forward to it, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak with all of you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister Sajjan. Um, I'd uh, now like to introduce Wade Grant, uh, Board Chair at New Relationship Trust. Uh, 
please give a, a round of applause to Wade. Awesome to see you. As was said, my name is Wade Grant. The traditional name I was given when I was 15 years old at the mouth of the Fraser River in the longhouse of the Musqueam Nation, where I'm from, is Tsalakolano, and I am the son of Tachtanat Wendy Grant John and Kayapalano Howard Grant. I'm also the chair of the New Relationship Trust Board, and I want to thank Minister Sejan for, for being here today and looking forward to the future of this, this fund. Over the years in administering the BC Indigenous Clean Energy Initiative, the New Relationship Trust has had the honor of facilitating partnerships with the federal government, the provincial government, BC Hydro, Fortis BC, but most importantly, facilitating relationships with over 65 First Nations in the province. Thanks to these partnerships, we've been able to direct more than $20 million in funding to support clean energy projects since the project's inception. As I grew up, we always heard that First Nations were always the stewards of the land. We were always the first to ensure that Mother Nature was protected. When you hurt, hurt the earth, you hurt yourselves. And unfortunately, colonization has ensured that we became dependent on fossil fuels and other dirty energy that would create climate change that's impacting our, our nations far too many times. So it's understandable that this program has been significantly oversubscribed each year, receiving many more applications that we, than we can actually process. That demand is expected to continue, particularly as power demands continue to grow. And we all seek to decol decarbonize our energy systems. And this fund is well suited to building energy capacity in British Columbia to address future power needs and Indigenous communities can play a vital role at the forefront of new energy production in the province. The renewable energy power projects funded by this program over the last year years have included hydro, wind, biomass, solar, marine, and geothermal projects, which aim to produce 135,000 megawatts per year. The benefits will resonate in many ways within the First Nations communities as well. For them, sustainable clean energy means self-sufficiency and resiliency in the face of ch changing conditions, cleaner air and quieter communities, better quality of life by reducing dependency on diesel-based electricity for those that live in remote areas. And it also means jobs and training for more than 750 people, not only during construction, but after and ongoing operations for some of these projects. These economic benefits will not only benefit the communities, but will ripple throughout their regions. Funded projects are expected to generate some $16 million in revenues. And energy efficiency measures funded through this initiative also help to lower energy bills for, for Indigenous households, resulting in savings of up to $2 million each year. So this program was designed with a life cycle approach to build capacity and bridge the gap in early stage funding for for clean energy ventures. We are pleased to see this momentum continue with the funding announcement today. The New Relationship Trust looks forward to leveraging and building on the partnerships that it's already created with the Government of Canada to support decarbonization of community energy systems and energizing the clean energy transition that is now underway. As a father of two young children who in the next 10 years will be in their 20s, I look forward to seeing what's new on the horizon as we become leaders in clean energy and providing and giving back to not only our communities, but all of British Columbia. And in my language, I say, thank you so much. Hi, Chico Wade. Uh, thank you. Uh, finally, uh, we'll hear from uh, uh, Natea Vinson. Uh, Chief Executive Officer, First Nations Technology Council. Uh, Natea. Thank you. Natalia Vincent on Squest. Te te kamloops to sequetum, maiste equim. As the newly appointed CEO of the First Nations Technology Council, I'm so pleased to be here and accepting this generous funding from Pacific Ann for our D Digital Horizons project. For those unfamiliar with the Technology Council's work, 
We are a not-for-profit sector council whose mandates come directly from the BS BCAFN, the First Nations Summit, and UBCIC. We provide digital skills training to Indigenous learners and advocate for digital equity and ultimately enable First Nations individuals and communities across the province to actively, actively lead and shape technology. With this support for the, from the Government of Canada, over the next two years, we will train 700 Indigenous students through Indigenous-designed and led technology skills and entrepreneurship programs. And I think you got some wrong numbers because we've actually trained over 1,400 students since uh, 2018. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the Digital Horizons project will also build on research from our groundbreaking labor market study designed to understand current and future demand for emerging jobs and required training in tech and tech-enabled sectors for Indigenous people in BC. I encourage you to, to look at this research report that we put up on our website earlier this year. It's kind of a book, it's about 300 pages, so we always joke that it's a book, but if you can get through it or even half of it, I'll, I'll take you for a drink. Um, I wanna thank Minister Sajjan and his team for the opportunity to partner together to do this vital work. By taking action on reconciliation and funding Indigenous organizations, Digital Horizons is supporting our work to realize digital equity and ensure Indigenous peoples can influence the future of technology. Thank you.